In this presentation, we will discuss the payroll expense journal entry within QuickBooks. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, you go to the view dropdown and the open windows list. We're now going to discuss the journal entry for payroll. This is important because this is how we typically think of recording transactions from a financial accounting standpoint. We think of debits and credits debits and credits increasing to record transactions. When we process the payroll, however, in QuickBooks, QuickBooks sets it up in such a way that we don't see that standardized journal entry as you would think we would to process one full payroll. It's still important to know the journal entry because the accounts still are going up and down. And there are many times when we want to know the journal entry, for example, if we had a third party that was processing the payroll that they were gonna put it into our system, the easiest way to do that is with one journal entry. It's also important to note that we can think of these journal entries in terms of a journal entry for each employee or as a journal entry for the in entire payroll process as one, lumping everything together. To consider this, let's take a look at a paycheck and see how QuickBooks will report this paycheck on the financial statements. So we're gonna go to the banking dropdown. We're gonna go to use register and we'll go to the chart uh, checking account. Let's go to the checking account. All right, here we have the checking account. Now, if we look at our first paycheck, this for Anthony, we only have one employee. This is our simplest process for the paycheck. If we double click on this paycheck, we had it paid on 2 1 it's for the month of January, paid on, on February 1st. Looking at the paycheck detail, this will give us the detailed information that we could construct a journal entry for, from. Now, all of this side is related to the employer journal entry. So if we were to think about how we're going to make this journal entry, typically in financial accounting, we think of it as two separate journal entries. We have the employer journal entry, and then I would typically break out the taxes uh, separately. So we have the employee that we're paying the employee, taking the withholdings from the employee, and then the taxes. These are the taxes. This is the employee side of things. So here we have the gross pay, and if we think of that in terms of a journal entry, that would be the debit to expenses that we would are going to see. In terms of QuickBooks, we'll see it increase on the expense side. And then we would have the withholdings. This is what was taken out, federal income, Social Security, Medicare, and state taxes. Those are going to be credits that we're going to take out, and they're going to go into a liability. The difference then is going to go to the, the net check, the cash that's going to be paid. So we can think about that journal entry here. Let's see what it looks like if we go into the financial statements. If we close this back out, we're going to close this back out and go to the reports dropdown, company and financial. Look at our two main financial statements, the profit and loss being one of them. <laughs> then we're, we're going to make it as of 020118, 020118. And this will just show one payroll. And we've broken out the... Uh, payroll expense and the payroll taxes, which are the employer portion in this example. And we've done that by changing the payroll items. We'll talk about that later. This is the payroll expense side of it. However, if we double click on it, we'll see the detail for it. These are two paychecks that are both Anthony here. And we can see that it's broken out by paycheck, not necessarily by journal entry. It's broken out by the paycheck detail. But we can see that it's increased in expense account and we know that expense accounts are debit balance accounts, so this is basically the debit. But it's recording it with two items based on the journal entry. If we double click on it then, and we double click on this item, we see that the, the numbers being picked up are coming from this paycheck, and they're the hourly and the overtime. So in other words, they're not the net pay. This is a debit, this is an increase to the expense account for the gross pay uh, on the employee attack, the employee payroll expense. Then if we close this back out and close this back out, we look at the other side, which is going to be on the balance sheet. So if we go to the reports drop down, company and financial, and we take a look at the balance sheet. And we make this as of, let's say, 020118 as well. So we have that same break. We'll see in the checking account, if we double click the checking account, there's our, our check. So it, it credited the checking account. There's our paycheck. If I double click on that item 
and double click on or just click on the paycheck detail that's the net check not the gross pay the net check so we can see we can reconstruct this we can say okay this one paycheck is decreasing uh, the cash by the net check and it recorded an expense for the gross pay the difference then if I close this back out and close this back out and close this back out is going to be in the payroll liabilities so in the payroll liabilities, this is going to get a bit confusing. If we double click on the payroll liabilities, we're going to see all this stuff here. And notice this is, this is where it gets a little tricky in QuickBooks because it's trying to give us detail, not in terms of debits and credits, but by the activities that's happening. And what they're trying to do is really limit the number of accounts that we have to simplify things and group more stuff into grouped up accounts, meaning this liability account is is responsible for all the other stuff that was taken out of the check and the employer liabilities so if we break this out this is all one paycheck then and we say okay well where did that where did that 4.06 come from if we double click on the 4.06 and we go to this paycheck we have to look at the detail that's the employee training it's a california tax but and, and it's an that's an employer side which we're not even really discussing right now we're only discussing the employee side so we'll get to that we're kind of grouped them together here we'll get to that a little bit later but that's included and then if we go down here to that 174 what is that if I go into this this item here the 174 is the federal withholding that we pay it's a payable that we're going to owe so we close this back out close this back out okay what's the 25188 there's two of them and there's a 5891 two of them double clicking on those that's the employer and employee portion of social security and medicare closing this back out closing this back out then uh, we see that the 24 if we go back into that item 24 same check federal unemployment so we can see that basically all of the all the stuff that's being pulled out of the check as well as all of the stuff over here that's the employer side is being pulled out and put into a liability account so that's nice but also confusing and it's formatted a little bit differently than we would expect I'm closing those two back out in terms of a journal entry I'm going to close this back out in terms of a journal entry too we might think it make it, it would make it a little bit easier if we were to apply these out to not just the payroll liabilities but possibly FICA liabilities for Social Security, for Medicare, a li different liability account for FIT, a different liability account for the uh, insurance, the dues, or any kind of benefits. And we can do that. We'll take an example of that. But the default for QuickBooks is just to group it all together. And that's probably to try to simplify it for most people. Although, when we do try to look at the detail, it can be more complex and more confusing when we go into this payroll account. So that's that's one format we can look at. If we just look at this journal entry for the one employee in that payroll, we can see that we increased the the expense account by the gross pay, we decreased the checking account by the net pay, and we put everything else into the payroll liability account. Now, if we take a look at one more, just to uh, get an example of go back to our checking account. If we go down to these last two, you'll note that there's two employees now, Anthony and Judy, and this, this last payroll. So this one happened on 1231. If I was to double click on Judy now, this is our second employee. In her detail, we've got this big paycheck that happened at the end of the year. If you were to think about payroll then, if we close this back out and say, okay, well, what would the journal entry be for the employee if we, if we go back? to our well let's run it again reports company financial and the profit and loss report this time i'm going to run it just for the end of the year uh which is 12 31 18 12 december 31st 2018. now we we've broken it out to a couple different uh, groupings depending on the payroll type we're looking at the payroll expenses here if we double click on it now you'll see that we have payroll items for Judy and Anthony now. So now, now we can think of this as two separate journal entries, one for each employee that's gonna have a similar process as we did in the past, or as one big journal entry. If we didn't wanna see the detail by the employees, for example, if we got something from paychecks or EDP, 
and we, we just want to enter it into the system as one big journal entry so that we see total expenses, then we can group them together as one big journal entry, or we can think of it as detail between two journal entries. So here's the expense account. If we go to the other side on the balance sheet, which I'm going to have to open again because I closed it, reports, company financial, profit and loss, and we go down to the balance sheet standard. I'm going to make it as of 12-31-18. Now if we go to the checking account, we can see we have these two checks. These are both payroll checks. And again, we can think of it as two separate journal entries for our two employees or one lump sum journal entry bringing the checking account down by 116, 153. So if you think about it as a journal entry, say from another outside source, we would probably put in the net check just to get the total activity. If I want the detail, we would go to the outside reports from ADP, ADP, or Paychex, or whoever our outside payroll company would happen to be. If we close this back out and we go to the payroll liabilities, it's going to look like a mess, but Notice these are only two, two employees. And again, this is where it can kind of get confusing by grouping them all together into the payroll liabilities account. Uh, even just two employees looks a bit overwhelming. But if we go into any of these items, it's just going to take us to one of two paychecks where we should be able to find each one of these item details within the paycheck detail.